Hey friends, let's see who's hanging out today. What are you guys up to? We're gonna do some fun um, technique type stuff today because I think a lot of people are um, intimidated with coloring and stuff. And so I really wanted to take an opportunity to show you guys some cool things you can do with the stamp sets that um, aren't necessarily coloring involved. So um, when you pop on, if you could say hello, that would be amazing. Um, if you would like to share the video, that would be great too. But we're going to get our craft on. We're about to get crafty. How about that? Who wants to get crafty? All right. So um, what I have going on here, this is a piece of sweet sentiment paper. I have a stamp set. Um, I have stencil. Um, I'm going to actually tag a couple of people. Maybe. I can't type. It's been a day. I don't know why I can't type. But I can't. Facebook's doing weird things, I swear. Um, Facebook is doing like super weird things to me. Um, well, doing super weird things to like everybody. So. I'm going to send this to a couple of people and we'll get started. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, first off, I'm gonna start by cutting down my paper. Um, let me grab my paper cutter here. And I'm gonna cut this. I actually want this to be, I'm gonna cut this to five and a quarter. Miss Sandy Ledoux who? How are you, babe? Are you feeling better yet, honey? I caught you in the bathroom. <laughs> oh my gosh, Carrie, you cracked me up. Then don't answer. <laughs> um, okay, so I've cut this to five and a quarter, mainly because my card base is five and a half by five and a half square. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead, let me grab my bone folder. I'm gonna go ahead and, so my card base is just made out of like GP um, paper. Um, 110 pound, cause I like a nice thick card base that stands up to everything. So this is five and a half by five and a half. And then I'll cut a piece of like matted paper, you know, matte paper to put under that. Um, just so you know, I use the, it's actually not GP, it's the Recollections 110 pound and it's the Dove White. Um, I like things slightly off-white. Um, so that's what I'm using. All right, so I'm going to start with, 
I'm gonna double do stencils, okay? Um, you can watch and take care of business. Hey, Tyler. Sandy, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. So we're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff to this and I want you to see that you can make a card without having to, um, you know, really color a whole bunch of stuff. Some people are intimidated by that. And I just want you to see that it's easy as pie. So I have my pixie spray. I love my pixie spray. This stuff makes me super duper happy. Um, I just shake it up and I spray a good coat on my stencil and then I kind of wave my stencil. Oh, did you see that? My lid just came off my sprayer. Um, just don't make things like they used to there. Um, and I shake it around a little bit so that it, um, dries slightly. And then I'm going to position this onto my card. Now, what colors are we feeling like today? Miss Kaylee, my little sister, I love you. I miss you. Um, Kaylee, I totally ordered stamps. Are you proud of me? <laughs> I, I actually ordered stamps. So I'm going to take some of this. This is frog tape. I love frog tape, but make sure you get the yellow frog tape um, because it's like the low tack stuff. But ever since purple tape changed and has the little flowers on it now, purple tape is horrible. So um, I like frog tape now and it's way less expensive and um, you'll find it in the hardware store or I get mine off of Amazon and I buy the two pack. And these rolls are like super thick. The yellow is the best. Um, I know Kaylee, I thought you'd be proud. Yes, frog tape is amazing. And um, yeah, so just order it off of Amazon if you wish. Now the important part of frog tape or any tape when you're taping down your stencil so that it doesn't move is to make sure you don't tape over your paper because otherwise you'll have that little, like this one is taped over my paper. And that one's fine, and that one's fine. Okay, all right, so I just taped that down so it doesn't move. What colors are you guys feeling today? Um, They have a green frog tape. The original frog tape is green. I'm drinking a mocha here, you guys. Um, But they have different, the different colors are the different amount of tack that's on them. So the yellow is the best frog tape for card making because it doesn't, um, mess up your paper. So there's that. What, what color of oxidings are you guys feeling? Yeller? Kaylee says yeller. I'm, I'm down for yellow. I'm feeling blue green. Okay. We got this. We got like a teal, a yellow vibe going on. I can do that. So I'm going to pull out some twisted citron and these are my bunny brushes. These are from the rabbit hole designs. Um, if you go into onto my website and you click on my favorite things, I have an affiliate link for rabbit hole designs. And let me tell you, love the bunny brushes. I'm going to use another one of their, um, uh, stencils today because I love me some rabbit hole design stencils too. Um, peacock feathers and Kaylee wants a yellow. So we're going to go... Hmm, what do I want? I think I want, I think I want squeeze lemonade. I mean, squeeze lemonade sounds amazing right now, right? Um, yes, you need the yellow frog tape. Absolutely. Um, hold on a, a second and I'll show you the packaging. This is what it looks like. It is hardware tape. But this is the yellow is for um, delicate surface. So yellow frog tape is a thing. You get this whole thing. So when I bought it, I bought a two pack and it was like $18 for the two pack, which is way exceedingly less than what you pay when you are buying 
um, purple tape. So there you go. All right. Um, I think you do want to make a wreath today. I, I am 100% down with you making a wreath today. All right, peacock feathers, that's where we're gonna start. So I'm gonna start in this corner and I'm gonna kinda go up this direction. Now, one of the tricks that I like to do is I like to use a tissue to hold on to this stuff because otherwise the oils in your fingers will leave fingerprints on your oxidings. Your oxides are getting dry? Oh, honey, that must be your Texas weather. It's even drier. Well, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it would be. Do you store them upside down? Do you store them like this or do you store them like this? You're supposed to store them upside down. So that might be helpful to you. Now, when you're blending, like I said, I love my bunny brushes. They help me blend so smooth. I believe we rise by lifting others. That's why I promote other companies during my lives. We're all in this crafty world together. So if somebody has a superior product, I'm gonna let you know about it. These bunny brushes, totally superior product. I So much so that I bought one for every single color of my oxide inks and a few extras. <laughs> so that should tell you. Um, maybe you're using them too much. Maybe that's a thing. <laughs> Um, and I very rarely wash these. I, that's why I have one for every color. Um, the more you wash a brush, the more it breaks down. So FYI, I very rarely wash my bunny brushes. Okay, I noticed that I go back and forth um, between my colors. This is now the Twisted Citron. That's how I get those smooth blends. It also has to do with the Sweet Sentiment paper and the way it takes the ink, but that's how I do the smooth blends. All right. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Good job, guys, on choosing colors. Um, the thing I store my brushes in is from Organize More. Um, I have one little tray from Make It by Marco, which is like a 3D laser printed um, little tray that I store my brushes in like while I'm using them. Um, it's the same people that makes these little trays for your um, chamois. Words are hard. <laughs> Words are very, very hard. Um, so, um, but the big storage that I think you're talking about, Sandy, is from Organize More and it stores all of my oxide ink pads along with the brushes beside them. Okay. Um, not gonna lie, one of my favorite things in the entire world, like the entire world, um, is peeling stencils. Like, it just makes me so happy. <laughs> it makes me exceedingly happy to peel stencils. Um, so here we go. It's like one of those, you know, weirdly gratifying. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. Um, the Distress Oxide Inks. Um, one, one of the organizers from Organizer, Organize More. Just one of them will hold all of your oxide inks and we'll have a few extra spaces so you have space to grow. Okay, so now, like I said, rabbit hole designs. A little bit of pixie spray or a lot of pixie spray, whatever. Don't judge me or judge me, whatever. So this has 
a heart like right in the middle and this happens to have a void right in the middle. This is an example of two products that work perfectly together that didn't even mean to do it and yet here we are. Okay. Did I make that straight? So um, a good tip in stamping is either make sure you have it totally straight or that it's intentionally wonky. Because, yeah. So I'm going to try to make this perfectly straight. Back to my frog tape. I am a loopy girl, Carrie. Thanks for noticing. It's part of my charm, babe. Um, yeah. Okay, so now I need to grab, um, I want hickory smoke, I think. So this is a dark gray, a smoky gray. Um, of course, Archie's gonna bark because otherwise you guys would be really concerned. And so I'm getting a lot of ink on my brush and I'm not gonna do this entire stencil. I'm gonna do like pieces of it. I don't want it to be like, perfectly all hearts everywhere. I want it to just be like kind of ghosted in. So I'm gonna take a peek at it and see if that's the way I want. Oh yeah, that's cool. It's not me, don't worry Archie. <laughs> no, it's the neighbor, that's the UPS guy. <laughs> Check that out. How fun is that? Oh my God, these two stencils work so well together. I love, love, love it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in from the sides and shadow in the sides. And again, I don't want fingerprints on this. I know, Archie misses you. Kaylee. All right. So there's that. Okay. This is when like the crafter math happens, like my desk becomes total chaos. So I'm gonna grab a piece of paper to mat. So I've just grabbed a piece of dark gray paper. And so my card base is five and a half by five and a half. And my card is five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut this to five and three eighths square. And that way everything is an eighth of an inch smaller than the previous piece. And it makes for perfect matting. Just like that. And then kind of once you see what I'm doing here, then you can understand and you can make like a whole bunch I ignored your text. Oh, I answered you in my brain and I never actually texted you back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a terrible human being. I'm so sorry. Um, what stamp set do I want to use? Maybe I'm just going to make this a thank you card. I think that's a very beautiful scripty thank you. I think that that will be perfect across here. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I have this, this scrap of the gray paper. And I have my Misty. And I'm gonna set these at the corners. And then I'm gonna grab my thank you. And I'm gonna, oh wait, yeah. And I'm gonna center it. Oh my gosh, I'm so lame, you guys. It's been a day. It makes it easier to math if you start at one. <laughs> oh. All right. Is this picture dark? Does that light help or does it just create glare? Right? <laughs> I totally answered you in my brain. I was going to say, you know, I'm working. What did I say? I'm working, I have a live that I like to do, and I have to color a release for another stamp company. Why? Would you like to have coffee? That's what I said. And look, I'm having coffee. <laughs> Kaylee, you're invited to join me for a cup of coffee that I'm going to have, whether you join me or not. <laughs> Um, okay, so there's a couple of different white inks that you can use. Um, right now, I'm, I'm in the hunt for a perfect white ink. Um, and right now, I can't get this one out. So this white ink, Distress Ink, um, I'm using it. We'll see how it goes. But I've been on the search for a great white ink pad. So if anybody knows like a fantastic white ink pad, hook a sister up. Because, yeah, I've tried so many of them. Like so many of them. And I just want something that stamps. I still have a plethora of kiss Christmas gifts to give to you. OMG. Are you on your way? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. This white ink doesn't do it for me. Um, this color box white ink doesn't do it for me. I have so many white ink pads. Um, the one that I used to have was a Stampin' Up one and it was like Whisper White or something like that. And it was awesome. But all of these kind of stink. So, open to recommendations. It's not too bad. It's just not exactly what I want either. I want like bright white. Like holy crap, in your face white. And I don't think that that exists. So I'm going to give it a second because the pigment in the white ink always takes a second to dry. And then I usually will use my luminance pencil and go over it. I didn't cut that quite right. I got to trim it down just a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to drive me nuts. Welcome to my card making process. There we go. Okay. I think my pencil broke. It did. I'm still going to use it. You can use a gel pen for this too. But 
I'm just beefing up that white just a little bit. Okay, there we go. For bright white, I have to emboss. Yeah, but I can't find a really good white embossing powder either. So that's a thing. So now I'm gonna set up my card and try to decide how I want things to look. I think I'm gonna do it just like that. Super pretty, super simple, um, yet very, very striking. And we're not done. We have lots more stuff to do. So, oh, did I already, yeah, I did. I already pulled them out. Okay, so now we're going to start gluing. Um, I use the Barely Art craft glue. Um, this stuff is my absolute favorite. I use it constantly, every day, on pretty much everything. Now you can see if you took some time to like stencil a whole bunch of things like all together, um, that you could make a plethora of cards in a very short amount of time. Alabaster is my favorite white embossing powder. I don't know if I've tried that one actually. Um, the refill bottle I have, love this guy. <laughs> Do remember to shake it though because the glue does separate, but yeah. I have, so this is the two ounce bottle, the mini bottle, and then I have the four ounce bottle and the refill because that's how much I really love this product. The thing I like about using glue over using tape is that I can take a second to position my card so that it's nice and straight before it adheres. And then I can push that down. Um, it doesn't get runny, but like the refill, if you don't shake it up before, like I never shake this bottle, but the refill I always shake because you can see it does separate. But I think that's because the refill just sits there for a while, where this one I use constantly. So, yeah. All right. So there's a couple of things that we can do, and I'm going to ask you guys what you want to do. So do you want to use flowers on this? I have a whole bunch of wild orchid crafts flowers. Or do you want to go with the enamel dots? These are the Gina Marine Designs enamel dots that I have in the shop. Um, that will dictate on what I do with this. Yeah, it doesn't clog up at all. And it doesn't um, wrinkle your, your paper either. I know Sandy will say enamel dots because that is right in her wheelhouse. Sandy loves her some bling. I have a love-hate relationship with gel pens.
I don't know why I decided to do this, but I did, so I'm stuck now. <sighs> enamel dots, enamel dots, enamel dots, dots, dots. Everybody says dots. All right, dots it is. The thing I've learned with gel pens is that you can't actually touch the paper with them. Because it looks so much better, does it? It kind of looks like chalk. The gel pen on this paper kind of looks like chalk on a chalkboard. You guys, we have some huge news coming from Sweet Sentiment. We are going to have an online retreat that's going to be amazing. Um, so I can't wait to start bringing you the details of that. There we go. I feel better about that now. Um, I can't wait to start bringing you, it wasn't bright enough before the gel. Yeah, I think so too. Um, anyway, so we're going to have an online retreat. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I can't wait to start bringing you the details of that. Um, it's going to be something you can purchase as a Mother's Day gift because the actual retreat will be the weekend after Mother's Day. Wink, wink. So, be thinking about that mama in your life. And what a wonderful gift it would be to give them the sweet retreat. Well, the sweet retreat's the one in November, but. All right, so I'm gonna use these white enamel dots because I love them. And I use them in um, multiples of three because in nature things happen in a multiple of three or five or odd numbers. And I just kind of arbitrarily put them on there. Like I don't, I don't measure, I don't take the time to try to think about where I put them um, because then they will always fall into a pattern. And I'm not about that. Online? What? Well, yeah, because it's all still everybody quarantining and, you know, staying away and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, we. I think we all have a love-hate relationship with gel pins. Um, so there's our enamel dots and there's our card. So... Um, anyways, I wanted you guys to have a retreat that you didn't have to go to the store for. You're not going to have to buy anything for it. You're not going to have to leave your house to get anything for it. It should all be stuff that you have around the home. So it should be really cool. So here's our card for today, you guys. Super simple, super fast. Um, and I just want you to see that you can look at the sentiments of a card or a stamp set, I mean, and be able to just use those sentiments. I mean, this is thank you, but some of my sentiments are, you know, more wordy. And so it's nice to be able to just use that one sentiment as the focal point of your card. And this will also help diversify your stamp sets a lot more because you'll be able to use these sentiments for things that are like, this is a really big sentiment. So you can use that all by itself. 
So you'll get a lot more use out of your stamp sets. You'll get a lot more um, longevity out of your stamp sets. They'll be a lot more um, versatile. That's the word I'm going for. They'll be a lot more versatile. So think about that when you're looking at stamp sets and um, how you can use those sentiments. Obviously, the stencils, you can get stencils everywhere. Um, I used a combination of the Sweet Sentiment Mandala stencil and a Rabbit Hole Designs heart stencil. And... Um, they just work so well together. I thought, like, I looked at them and I was like, yeah, those need to happen. So, um, yeah, there's no actual coloring on this. I mean, other than tracing the sentiment, there's not a lot that you have to do to make a very striking card. And you can do this as simple or as complex as you want. So let me show you. Here's another piece of sweet sentiment paper. And let me show you something that will probably like just blow your mind. Okay, so I'm gonna take my oxide ink and I'm just gonna touch the edges with this. So there you go. No stencil, no nothing, and you can use any kind of ink to do this, okay? It doesn't have to be an oxide ink. It's just what I had sitting right here. Okay. And I'm going over it a second time with that same brush to just kind of soften the sides. Okay. There we go. That's softened. Now what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to take one of these sentiments here. And this one says, sometimes in the winds of change, we find our true direction. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to grab my Misty here. Put this down here. Oops, move the paper. Okay, and I want this to be like down here in the corner because it's justified on the left. So I'm gonna make it like a left justified kind of thing. Now, if you don't have a Misty, you can, you know, line this up some other way. Um, but I have a Misty, so I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel here. Um, I happen to have my Memento Tuxedo Black sitting here, so that's what I'm gonna use. Everything within reach, right? And I'm probably gonna stamp this twice um, if I was really taking my time here, I would emboss this sentiment, but I'm not because I want to show you guys how fast you can do this. This is like the, oh crap, today is mom's birthday and I didn't get her a card. So, or, oh crap, I was just on the phone with my friend and she's feeling terrible, so I'm going to make a card and get it in the mail before the postman gets here. That's what this kind of card is, okay? So... I have my card base. Again, this is five and a half by five and a half. I might cut it down depending on what I end up doing here. And yes, I pre-cut a ton of card bases, just so you know. I know, I think everyone is intently watching because they got all quiet. So I'm taking my card base. I'm centering this on my card base. And actually, I want to have it have, oops, I hit the camera again. I'm sorry. So my card base is five and a half, so I want it to have a little bit of room. So I'm going to cut that off just a tiny bit. Okay. Grab my glue. And yes, I put a lot of glue on, don't judge me. Or judge me, whatever you feel like. Line that up. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab a couple of flowers. 
because I have them handy. tools again oh they're there good thing you didn't take my flower tools again yay said in a silent shout <laughs> i'm supposed to be working on an assignment <laughs> oh my gosh okay so this is a felt flower that becky roberts made and i actually think it's too big i'm not gonna use it Sorry, Becky, just not gonna happen today. All right, so I grabbed my flower tools. The most important tool you'll have in flowering is this: these pliers that are round nose and then they have the wire cutter right there. And I take the end and I twist it. Kaylee's seen my flower stash, so is Sandy. It's a very impressive flower stash because I think I collect them more than I use them. That's okay. Oh yeah, that's pretty. So I'm gonna glue this down. And I'm just going with this like organically. Like I am not taking time to plan this out. I'm just, I'm just straight up going for it. Same with this one. Well, yeah, jewelry tools, but I don't do jewelry, so they're flower tools. <laughs> just so you don't call me a tool and you don't have to do a lot I mean you can if you want you can do a ton of flowers like the card I made earlier today and posted um Sometimes I run away with my flowers and um, we skip through the meadows and we hang out in the sunlight and um, yeah, it, it's, all, it's all a thing. It all happens. Um, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we just slap a couple flowers on here and we call it a day. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Take your bone folder, give that leaf a little life. You have jewelry tools? Well look, you could make cards. Um, again, your flowers need to be threes, fives, um, odd numbers, just like anything else. The leaves I don't worry so much on, but I still tend to do them in threes and fives. But see, if you go like this, now I have five pieces. So three, four, five. So it's still an odd number. Okay, so I have little flowers down there. I'm gonna put a couple up here. You notice this is like huge white space, right? But yet it's still interesting. And all you've done is stamp a sentiment. This is literally all you done. Wow, that was great English. Um, I do a lot of overthinking on my cards too. It's I think it's just in our nature as crafters. Um, we really want everything to be over the top and incredible, and we want that wow factor. And sometimes I think the wow factor comes from simplicity. 
not always, but sometimes. And this is like one of those moments when you can take just a poignant sentiment and make it into something wow um, by understating it and not making, you know, this card that has so many different elements and so many different things going on with it. The focal point is really the message that you're sending. Okay. Now again, I'm gonna pull out my enamel dots. Um, so speaking of wow factor, just since we were talking about it, I'm gonna pull out my sparkly ones. But again, I'm not gonna go with like the crazy bright colors. Um, it dries fairly fast, Kaylee, not super fast, but fairly fast. And I'm gonna make, I'm just gonna use the off-white one or the white sparkly ones because glitter makes everything better, right? And I'm just gonna add to these focal points that I've created. Now, usually cards have like three elements because again, you're making um, focal points. So one, two, three, and they're all in the line. I follow the Fibonacci sequence. So, you know, your eye is drawn to the things that are um, pulled apart here. And you'll see by the way I place these, what I'm talking about. And I just dropped that one. Where'd it go? Here it is. Because heaven forbid I waste one little tiny one of these dots. Ooh, look, and it matches my nails. Look at that. How cool is that? And it took us like minutes to create. So you have your poignant sentiment. You have that distress ink around it. Um, you have your cool little enamel dots. Um, normally, in all honesty, I would add three sets of enamel dots because it just feels wrong to me to only have two. So when I look at my card, it looks unbalanced to me. So I would do that. So now the heavy part of my card, the focal point of my card is down here, but I have that balancing scenario up here. Um, okay, after three years, I finally got you sold. Um, hey, Linda Lou Who. So this creates that focal point for you. You have your three elements with your sentiment, um, your flowers, and that colored paper. Um, I didn't use any pattern paper. I used very minimal craft supplies. I used everything that was, um, you know, within reach of me. And there was no coloring involved. And I made this beautiful card. I think it's beautiful. Um, I made this beautiful card inside of like five minutes. Um, something that you can just send to a friend. They know you're thinking about them. They know that... Um, you took time to create this, um, but it didn't, number one, it didn't break the bank. And number two, that was not stressful. You know, that was pretty, that was fun. That was easy. Um, that was something that you can, you know, reproduce. You can make a whole bunch of these cards. So I know a lot of you are making cards for like rest homes or um, like veterans or, you know, all of that kind of stuff. This is something that you can recreate, you know, a whole bunch of these cards. And it was very simple to do. So I would put this in like a craft colored envelope and I would send it on its way. Um, that's just how I create. So <laughs> I don't color everything. Contrary to popular belief, I don't always color everything. And this will make you look at stamp sets in a very, very different way. 
Um, thank you, Linda Luhu. If you're looking at what the sentiments say and if they are poignant to you or, you know, really great for somebody in your life, then there you go. I mean, rock on. Everything from just a simple thank you to, you know, a message that, like I said, is is poignant, um, especially during these times, you guys. Everybody needs a little love. So, um, go on USPS.com and buy your coffee stamps. <laughs> like I finally did, <laughs> um, and slap a coffee stamp on this and send it on its way. Um, Sandy, I think you could do flowers this way. I think this would be something that you could totally do with flowers. I mean, that was super simple. Three flowers here, two flowers here, um, add a leaf, add a couple leaves, and you're good to go. I buy all of my flowers from Wild Orchid Crafts, and um, they're very inexpensive, even though you're paying shipping from Poland. Um, if you have been a subscriber with me for a long time, you've noticed that Wild Orchid Crafts, um, showed up in some of your subscriptions. Like, Sandy, remember making all of these? Um, this was in last April. This is actually a one year old. <laughs> um, and this little bouquet of flowers was in with your subscription kit. So pull out these little flowers and use them. Um, they're all from Wild Orchid Crafts, and I am in no way an affiliate for them or anything, but their mulberry paper um, flowers are my absolute favorite. So there you have it, guys. A couple of quick cards, and um, <laughs> that's the most you've done with flowers. <laughs> Me and Sandy and Linda Ledoux, who made all of those little flowers, not Linda, Sandy Ledoux, who, and Linda Lou, who. <laughs> made all of those little flower bouquets for everybody. <laughs> so um, anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me today and um, be looking out for information on the retreat. And um, yeah, I guess that's, that's everything. Um, just FYI, I'm going to be looking for a person who um, likes to type. We're going to put it that way. Somebody who loves to type. Somebody who's a good article writer. I'm thinking of you, Cameron. Just FYI. Um, <laughs> Tyler, you might want to warn your wife. Um, Sweet Sentiment is looking for somebody who will um, do their blog for them. So just throw that out there. If you know anybody who's willing to do that, I would love it. Um, so contact me. I will talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to go finish my almond milk mocha and maybe eat some lunch. And I will see you guys probably at some point tomorrow. Probably around noon again tomorrow. But we will see. So, toodles. Ah, Tyler, that's funny. <laughs>